This is Tom Blair with Inside Colorado Wrestling, uh, talking with head coach Mike Thompson from uh, Legacy High School. How you doing, Mike? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm doing a series of uh, interviews, uh, whether they're video interviews or audio interviews with all the coaches in the state of Colorado. Um, so I was down here at uh, Legacy High School with a clinic for uh, Ryan Deacon was putting on from North uh, Western University. Uh, so I figured I'd stop and, and talk to you, Mike, and okay. see uh, if you're getting ready for the season. And I understand school just started. Um, uh, so basically, I just got a few questions uh, to go through. Um, last year, how, was your, how do you feel your season went and what were your results uh, at the state tournament? Um, it was a season that we had a lot of growth in as individuals on our team that had some things they had to work through as far as you know injuries or um, wrestling skills and things like that. Uh, but uh, we've always focused on the end of the season, understanding that uh, your season's not determined on the first weekend. Right. And, uh, so when it came to the end of the season, our kids were ready, and we did well in the regional tournament and uh, qualified. I want to say eight kids. I think it was eight to state. Uh, ended up taking sixth place at the state tournament in 5A. Um, I think a point out of fifth place, a handful of points out of fourth. So uh, they did well. They finished strong. Um, obviously, as a coach, unless you win it, you always want to do a little bit better. Um, so that's our goal this year is to outdo what we did last year. Who did you have uh, placing? Uh, well, Joey Joyner was second, and Funk placed, and we had uh, our heavyweight placed. Yeah. And I think uh, our Aaron Bob was our heavyweight that placed, um, and then Grady Funk, I think he took fourth, Joey took second. Um, I think it was just those three that placed last year. Things start running together as you get old. So you were able to uh, have one in the finals and, and do the championship walk? Yes. Okay. Uh, the current season, what do you get for returning wrestlers? Uh, returning, we had a lot of kids coming back as far as last year's last year's state tournament. Joey's back, so we anticipate a lot from him and Brady at Funk's back. Um, and so we expect a lot of those two as leaders in the room. And then uh, we got some young kids at 13s at, and 20s at Russell Force and Regionals in place. And then our 32 pounder that placed in Regionals. That's uh, so we have um, Caden Rasmussen and Dustin Katow and Alex Almanza as far as the lightweights go. Um, Adam Lynch will come back as a big kid. He'll probably go up a weight class of 220s this year. Um, one of our JV heavyweights old that took uh, third or fourth at JV State will step in this year in the varsity spot probably, and a couple of those. Uh, what does your room look like? I mean, as far as numbers, what do you? What's your average numbers, and how uh, do you how do you end the season with? Right, last year we were down on numbers. We only had like 35 kids out last year. We usually run between 50 and 60 kids. Um, so last year was a, a smaller team for us. This year we're hoping to get around 40 again. Um, we usually finish, other than last year, we usually finish around 40 kids in the room. Um, we might start with 45 or 50. Um, if we do start with 60 or 65, we've had that in the past. And some of those kids are seniors that have never wrestled before, so they usually weed out pretty quickly. But uh, we usually finish around 40 or just above 40. We might start with a few more than that. Okay. So. I know with the... With the uh, size of the room, uh, having over 40 would be kind of tough. Yeah, when we do get to the, that, that number of 40, we have a great big room. Um, we're able to split our practices. Uh, and you know, Some kids will come in here, some kids will go to the restroom and switch them up. And we work with the numbers. Um, I, I'm a big proponent of not cut, making cuts in wrestling because I, I think the sport needs to grow versus cut. So we invite, whether it be a senior or a freshman out, we just want the sport to grow. And I've had success getting kids that have never wrestled before come out as a freshman or sophomore for the first time. Um, I've had kids that were in the state finals that maybe didn't start wrestling until their ninth or eighth grade year. And, you know, it's a matter of growing the sport. What do you have for incoming freshmen or any transfers? Um, I don't really know right now. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a person that really goes out of a lot to try to, get kids to come to school here, I guess, is the best way to say that. Um, so I know our youth program, uh, we have, I think, five or six kids from our youth program. That's truly what I depend on. 
I think we have one of the best youth programs in the state. And uh, they run anywhere from 80 to 100 kids in the youth program. And uh, I know when I get kids from them that they're going to be ready to go as freshmen. Uh, so I, think I have five or six kids coming in from the Bolt program. And I know we have two or three kids that are here from out of state that have approached me since school started last week about wanting to start working out with us if they wrestle. But I don't know their credentials. Okay. So it sounds like you're bringing in uh, eight to ten uh, new people and not losing a whole lot from last year's squad. Right. What are your goals for the season? Um, I'd like to have a couple more kids in the room. Uh, I'd like to see individuals uh, perform a little bit better on an individual basis more consistently throughout the season. Um, as a goal for the season, you know, we want to win regionals and finish top four in the state. Um, but uh, I want to focus a little bit more this year on the individual goals because if we can accomplish our individual goals, our team goals will take care of themselves. Okay. Are you uh, heavy into the dual team tournaments or individual tournaments? That's yet to be seen this year because they changed the scheduling this year for Chassa on how we can do our schedule. Um, and that also sometimes depends on the team I have, uh, whether they're experienced and they, they're, you know, I have eight kids. If I were to have eight kids come back that were state placers, I'd want to hit some pretty big tournaments with them. But if we're kind of just in the middle of the road or a little younger, I like the dual meet tournaments because they get matches in there. Um, the dual meet tournaments can be a blessing when you have a good dual meet tournament and you have some strong teams but they can also be a disaster if you don't have strong teams. And then we've been to a couple where you have a dual league tournament, but three teams only have six or seven kids on them, and that's not what you're going to. Correct, yeah. And you want to hit the top-notch dual team tournaments so kids can get maximized the number of matches they right. have. Exactly. Um, now, you said Chasa just changed the rules for uh, number of competition. Um, explain that a little so um, people can understand it better. Generally, without reading, to you, reading it to you uh, word for word, basically you can have 10 duel, duels in a season, and that can include um, uh, individual duels, tries, and things like that, and you get 10 points for tournaments. Uh, dual meet, or a two-day tournament, for example, with two points, a single-day tournament would be one point, and you can get a total of 10 points. Dual meet, you get a total of 10 points. Um, but it's the biggest change I think it is, if I read it, read it correctly, is it's per wrestler, not per team. So, so you can have a full schedule and sit kids throughout the season and then let them wrestle later without penalizing their number of competitions. Okay, so, so you have to watch the number of points per wrestler and not as a team as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which I think is a good thing because in the past, you, know, you, you get a kid that gets a skin infection or gets hurt and they have to sit out a tournament. They're just out there for that number of competitions. They don't get to make that up. Whereas now, if you can find a tournament form, they can get into a tournament. Okay. Uh, what's your coaching staff look like? Uh, it's the same as last year for the most part. Um, I have two guys on my staff that wrestle for me and went on to college. And then Coach Wilson has done our uh, middle school programs before they cut the program. And um, that, you know, Actually, three. Actually, all three of the other guys are former wrestlers of mine that went on to college. Um, Coach Lopez, probably the most experienced. He's a two or three time All American for Western State. Okay. Um, have the, uh, has Chassis changed the season itself? Is it uh, shortened, longer, or is it the same as in, in the past? No, it changed this year. Uh, the, we, the timing of when you start your competitions and when state tournament changes you, every other year. So that those dates change. But it works out to really basically get the same number of matches for wrestler if you work your schedule right. So what is the uh, official start date for wrestling? For competition is December, that first week of December for competition. With practice starting in November? Yeah. Okay. But the unofficial preseason practice can start at any time? Uh, most people start last May. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I thank you for your time. I uh, appreciate uh, everything you do here uh, at Legacy High School for the wrestling program, and good luck in the season. All right. Thank you.